No, Rich, I want to ask you an important question, and forgive me if this is cutting across your balance, because right. I don't want to, uh, but um, to put what you're saying in context here, as a start of your summary a few minutes back, you referred to a documented history of military confrontations that have been held um, at a high level of classification. But do you believe that this means that some of these visitors are not friendly? Or is this just a knee-jerk military response on our part, that they go firing at these things because they're frightened? Do you think that, for instance, Dr. Stephen Greer is correct when he says that all the visitors are friendly, without exception? Or do you think that there's something more complicated happening? I, I, think, um, I don't think that there's a proper basis for Dr. Greer or really for anybody to say that all of these extraterrestrial intelligences are bene benevolent. I mean, I've heard the logic. I've, I've spoken with Stephen Greer uh, from time to time about this, and I, I just i am not persuaded. Uh, one of the things that he has said is, well, it's obvious because they would have uh, taken over or destroyed us by now if they were truly hostile. Um, I'm, not, I'm not persuaded by that logic. Now, that doesn't mean that they're all out to get us. Um, but when you really look at the sum total of, A, the, the true, the full abduction literature, the full literature of people who have had alleged encounters with these other beings, um, I can absolutely say for sure I would not want to leave my two children alone in a room with some of these creatures. All right? I have no hesitation in saying that. Now, I, I certainly also would not believe that, that all of them are are evil or, or dangerous, but I do think that some of them, I mean, well, think of it this way. I mean, just be logical. We, we are on an evolutionary basis more advanced than, say, the Neanderthals were. So if we were to encounter the Neanderthals today, what would our relationship with them be? They would look at us thinking, wow, those humans have got all this great technology. They obviously have been able to solve all of the social problems that we have in our society. We have to be more like that. Rich, we're going straight into another break. I apologize for this. Just uh, hold that thought and we'll continue then with a much longer section afterwards. Thank you. to Rich Dolan, the author of UFOs and the National Security State, a wonderful work of scholarship. He just completed the second volume of a planned trilogy, which is a huge uh, repository of very well-presented material, which is available on keyholepublishing.com. And what we're talking about just this minute, if you just joined the show, is Rich is doing his best to give a summary of everything that he has concluded and observed in his immersion in this phenomenon over the last uh, more than 10 years of his life. And what we're talking about is, is any um, evidence or otherwise that... Um, some of these visitors may not be fully friendly or otherwise. Now, Rich, do continue that thought that you're on when you were interrupted. We've got quite a long segment here, so you can really pick up this ball and run with it. Well, well fine, great. Um, I, I'm always, I'm very uncomfortable when uh, other researchers make uh, these, these um, absolute type statements. Uh, in which they claim that they abs that they, they know the full nature of these these others, their agenda. Um, I I'm just I when I hear such people, my my instinct is to run far and fast from them, at least professionally, because I don't I don't think it's responsible uh, for any of us to make statements that that come down that strongly when when one hasn't provided sufficient evidence. Uh, it's not responsible, and in, and it also can be wrong. All right, so then it's really not responsible because, um, as I was as I was saying just before the last break, 
you know, there would be a great temptation if we were to go back to some ancient society, not even the Neanderthals, but let's say ancient Greece, uh, and we were to go and, and encounter them with our technology and our, uh, you know, the very sophisticated advances we've made, they might be tempted to think that we have solved all of the problems that they were trying to solve, and they would think, well, okay, we don't have to worry about these people. They're here to help us. And uh, they would surely be sadly mistaken. Uh, it's It's a foolish bet to think that any other civilization equally far advanced from us is going, therefore, to be benevolent, and that they, all that they want is for us to join their galactic community. All right, I'm, I'm very deeply suspicious of such claims, and in particular, I'm going to go a little further here than I usually go in public, uh, in particular when, when I see how poorly most of these arguments are made. Uh, they're either made, I mean, literally by allegedly channeled sources, okay, which... Is, is utterly irresponsible to try to make in, in, a, in a serious public venue. And yet people do this. Um, or when they do it simply on the basis of what they think is sufficient evidence, i.e. that these other aliens haven't blown us up by now. You know, one of the biggest uh, criticisms that I'm going to make of, of what Stephen Greer has done is uh, over his 2001 press conference, which is among UFO researchers. It's, it's famous. Everyone knows about the great conference at the press club in 01. And, in fact, let me just give Stephen Greer his credit, and he deserves a lot of it, by gathering together some really outstanding inside witnesses who were willing to talk on camera in front of the nationwide media about their knowledge of the UFO phenomenon from the inside point of view. That was incredibly important. And then, and then truthfully, it was, it was mangled. That's the only word I can think of. By this insistence, by Dr. Greer and by a few other people who were with him, that in addition to this alien presence, we need also to ban space-based weapons platforms. And the reason for that, according to Dr. Greer, was that these weapons are, in a sense, alienating the aliens, and their intention is peaceful. Now, at that point, even forgetting whether or not one is right or wrong on this issue, and even not with, you know, forgetting the fact whether one might agree that space-based weapons are a bad thing, to tack on this albatross of an issue that had absolutely not a single chance of going anywhere in Washington of 2001, and tacking that on to disclosure, and politicizing the issue in that regard, doomed the disclosure conference to failure. It was almost as if, I'm not saying this was the case, but it was, it was almost as if someone said, how can we assure that the disclosure press conference is going to fall flat on its face? Well, let's, let's put a bunch of you know, utopian political ideas in there, and it'll completely ruin it. And that's, that was what happened. Um, do you have any personal idea, and you may not want to answer this question, and if not, I'll understand why. Do you have any personal idea why that, 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 that change in strategy or that adaptation of this strategy may have occurred? I spoke to one person who was uh, fairly well connected with the disclosure press conference. Um, not, not an insider as insider, but someone who knew, who knows, uh, Stephen Greer quite well and was very much involved in the communication leading up to it. And I asked this, the question, why this, the whole, uh, element of space-based weapons were brought in to the press conference, uh, when it, when it very clearly was the torpedo that assured that it was going to fail. And the answer that I got was that, well, it was felt that the disclosure issue by itself wasn't sufficient to generate the press interest and we needed uh, something else. Now, is that true or not? Well, this is what I was told. And I, I said in reply, so of course after the fact and everything, I said, well, that's absurd. You know, when you're trying to convince a skeptical mainstream media that this, important, that this phenomenon is important and it's real, it's a, it is more than enough work for a day to, to present a very conservative case that there's a phenomenon that has not been adequately explained. You do that, you've, you've won. And, and what, what that conference suffered from was classic overreach 
trying to accomplish way too much. And in the process, you, you know, here's, here's getting back to your question about the intentions of these other beings. You know, Dr. Greer made it very clear that his opinion was these aliens are benevolent. In fact, he said elsewhere that they don't even do abductions, that if one was abducted, that that was clearly a military operation. I, I heard him say this. Do you believe that, would, What's that? Do you believe that? No, I absolutely do not believe that. Right. I, I think that there are military abductions, yes. And to argue that all of these are military is, is an absurdity when you look at the true phenomenon of the abductions, when one actually reads the literature. Okay, and this is where research is so important. It's really easy for anyone to go up on a soapbox and just say, here's what's going on. But if you haven't done the reading, if you haven't really become familiar with all of the research that's out there, and I'm talking about the work of people like Bud Hopkins, David Jacobs, and John Mack, the list of the three top ones, but they're not the only ones. There are many other researchers who've collected an enormous, enormous amount of data that does not lead to the conclusion that these are military operations. Now, some of them are. There are what are known as mill ads. I cover this in my new book, and um, you'll read it if you haven't gotten to it yet. That's a real phenomenon in my view, but that's that not even close to answers all of the nuances of the abduction phenomenon. And so by so, going out there... Why would an intelligent man want to present something that you and I both agree is an absurd case for anyone who's taken more than a superficial look at the evidence? Well, this is a great question. I've asked myself this question, Bill, many times. And we are not the only ones who have asked this question. I mean, I don't, I don't get it. I'm not that close with Dr. Greer. I mean, I've chatted with him. I, I interviewed him, in fact, for a magazine article a number of years ago, and he gave a very interesting interview. Um, but the thing is, understanding this fact, why is it that someone has, in my view, a, you know, the ability to make such impressive progress in certain aspects of this field and then have this blind spot that is so huge. I, I don't know. How is it that a person can do this? It, are there agendas we don't know about, or is it simply a, a normal human foible? And that is a question I don't have the answer to. I, I don't know how to answer that. You, you can ask him this. You, you were with him the other week in Barcelona. Maybe you can yeah. ask him that. I well, don't know. We did do an interview with him. We did a video interview that's going to be published in the next few days, which was just a couple of notches short of a fist fight, I have to say. Was it now? Um, really? Very interesting. If you can imagine somebody who is as assertive, outspoken, and unaccustomed to being interrupted as Dr. Greer is. That's right. Uh, matching him in the ring with Kerry Cassidy. Oh, my um, God. With myself chipping in with the occasional comment. I, I um, must... I must, absolutely must, watch this interview. <laughs> <laughs> it's vastly yeah, entertaining. Kelly, Kelly is a match for anybody yeah. that's out there. Anybody. Yeah. It's a lot of fun, and we gave um, him a pretty and, hard time. And um, I used your words, um, which you quoted just a few minutes ago. I told him he was being completely irresponsible in his statements. But I don't want to make this a personal sort of... Um, attack on any other researcher. I was interested in the, right. the, the phenomenology of the whole thing because we're talking about a vastly important topic that might affect the future of the human race if we get things wrong here. That's right. And That's exactly right. And it's not a personal thing. I don't have any personal uh, vendetta at all against Dr. Greer. And in fact, I'm, I'm always very happy to chat with him uh, to work in whatever way that is, is mutually logical for, for, you know, for that to happen. And... Um, I think that uh, he has done uh, a certain number of things that have been valuable. Uh, I, have, I have his books on my shelf, and I've enjoyed reading them. I, I find his, uh, his book called Disclosure to be an actual classic. Really well, I agree with you there. Yeah, I've read that so many times that that thick paperback is almost falling apart. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really one of the best books, actually, that I, I think one can have on the UFO phenomenon, on, on the nature of the cover-up and so forth. There's a tremendous amount of value in yeah. that book, and I, my hat is off to him for putting that together. So I don't want to sound like I'm, I'm going after him, but I, I must take issue with uh, yeah. some of these elements of what he has talked about. And uh, I agree that it is irresponsible. Um, that doesn't mean that he isn't right about some of it. Right? There, there are 
I mean, if I were to really give my, my gut feeling based on what I think I know or what I think the data looks like, I would say that there is a kind of silent Cold War going on right now with multiple alien and multiple human groups and probably all kinds of alliances that we not, are not even remotely aware of. Probably some human groups allied with some E.T. or alien groups against other human groups that might be allied with other E.T. alien groups. I could see that happening. And, and let me just say this. I don't have, um, I haven't tried, actually, to cultivate all of the, the deep inside sources that other people have, others such as yourself and Carrie, but I've cultivated some. And, and from the few that I have been able to get this far with, I do get this impression that there is a a significant kind of silent cold war going on with with technology by the way i mean another thing that i think is happening here is that uh i uh that there the human groups that have had covert technology have in all likelihood bill achieved a kind of level of breakthrough all right covertly that i don't think that they're sharing with the rest of us and so if you, I mean, think about how scientific progress goes. You make one breakthrough that leads to another, and that leads to another. So that progress isn't linear. It is exponential. And so what if, back in the 1950s and 1960s, significant strides were made by human scientists in understanding this exotic technology? And what if also they didn't share all of it with uh, commercial industry? What if they just kept it and used that knowledge to further their own research? Would they achieve a kind of separate breakaway civilization? This is actually the phrase that I use in my book when I theorize about this. Um, it's not an unusual concept. In our own history, we've had many examples of very separate types of human civilizations, whether you want to talk about the European and Chinese civilizations, for example, or even more recently, during the Cold War, with U.S., with Western and Soviet infrastructures, scientifically they did not always share their information with each other. There was a great deal of secrecy and so on. All right, so we have these examples, and what I think has happened is that at the deep black level, enough breakthroughs have been made so that this civilization, and that's what I call them, the black world, they have a level of technology and a, a fundamental level of knowledge about the nature of their world that we can with justice call them a separate civilization, loosely connected to our own, siphoning off money from our own, certainly, but really existing as a separate civilization. They are a breakaway. It's a huge concept, Rich, isn't it? Right. It's, a, it's, it's an interesting thinking tool to think of it that way. Right. But I think that's what's happened. And, and um, as a result of this, um, it, you know, it makes, it makes the disclosure of the UFO phenomenon all the more difficult. And now, I, you know, here's another thing. We, we, in our email a couple, the other day, we discussed maybe some of the topics we wanted to get into, and one of them was, I think, disclosure. It's something that I am often uh, talking about at various conferences and, and interviews. It is something I give a lot of thought to, even though I... I don't try to position myself as uh, the, uh, you know, exponent of exopolitics, but I, I'm, I'm interested in these issues. The problem with disclosing the reality of the UFO phenomenon is that it will be so revolutionary that it will blow our, our social structure and our civilization wide open. Not everybody believes this, but I believe it. And I believe it because once... Let's, let's let us assume that Barack Obama were to go to, in front of the cameras and say, yes, it has come to my attention that the UFO phenomenon is real and, and some of it is apparently extraterrestrial. Well, you can't just leave it at that, even though he might want to. There's going to be many, many, many follow-up questions relating to uh, who are these other beings? Are they actually abducting us? You can be sure that'll happen. But then it's going to get into... How are you guys able to keep this secret all along? In other words, it will lead to an analysis of the highly illegal black infrastructure, the secret infrastructure that has evolved to meet this. 
and it is an infrastructure that is really no different in his organization from the mafia. All right, where you've got all kinds of illegal money going into it because you have to keep it secret from your own government, from your own Congress, your own elected representatives. How do you do that? Well, you do it through all kinds of funds, whether it's drug trafficking proceeds, financial fraud. Okay, all of it goes in. Probably, let us let us assume, we see this in other aspects of the world. So, uh, probably with the UFOs. So, in other words, and then you know, in the control of the media, control of the academic communities. All of this will have to come out because people are going to ask, how is it that NBC missed this for 60 years? How is it that Yale University missed this for 60 years? And on and on and on. All right, and it will lead to these questions. And so it will be revolutionary. And it will eventually lead to the fact that there is very likely this breakaway group that has been existing in this other world for a long, long time. And I can't see that that's going to be a politically easy thing to to negotiate. Okay, Rich, that's a wonderful summary. I want to talk to you about disclosure some more as soon as we get back after the break. Just a couple of minutes and we'll continue the conversation.